All right guys, so now we are going to cover the motion path in After Effects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna create a shape. So I'm gonna create this rounded rectangle square. I'm gonna have it like this right here. And then I'll set my anchor point to the middle by pressing Control Alt and Home. And then I'll put my shape right about here. And you wanna make sure that you have a few things selected. So go up to Edit first, and then go to Preferences, General and then make sure that you have default spatial interpolation to linear selected. Press OK, good. And we also wanna make sure that we have this here selected, which is the toggle mask and shape path visibility. So we will be able to see our motion path. And then under your preview, make sure that you have this selected as well so that you can see the motion path when you use the preview. So I'm going to set the shape layer anchor point to the middle like this. Good. And then I'm going to bring up my position and then I'll put a keyframe here. And then let's zoom in a little bit more actually. Then we'll go to about two seconds and 15 frames. I'll drag it down here and then I'll go about here. I'll drag it here. And then I am going to drag my shape layer up here. Now notice something. We moved it in time, but we didn't only move it in time, we moved it in space as well. So we move the temporal and the spatial aspect. And if we click on these boxes here, notice that our keyframes will pop up. This is basically telling us where our keyframes meet in our timeline. Now notice what would happen if I was to say move the keyframes. So I'll grab the second one right here and then I'll hold on it and I'll move it like this. Notice that nothing happens in my timeline down here with this keyframe. This is because I'm simply moving this keyframe in space, but I am not moving it in time. Also, if I moved my keyframe down here, nothing would happen up there with the keyframe itself. But I want you guys to also notice as well that we have these little dots here. If I zoom up a little bit, these little dots actually represent the frames in between your keyframes down here. So if I will, ah, let me zoom out a little bit. I'll go to this keyframe right here. I'll zoom in. And then notice if I press page down to go forward, it is moving frame by frame in accordance to what is happening down here in my timeline. So that is what the little dots represent. So I'll zoom out a little bit. Now, some of you may be asking, why do some of the dots appear far away and some of the dots appear closer together? This is telling us basically the distance in between our keyframes. So notice that this first one here has a lot of dots. And if I move it very close, actually, it almost looks like a straight line. It almost looks like a straight line. They're very close together. This is because After Effects down here is going to have to travel a certain amount of time but up here, there is not a lot of space that the shape is going to have to travel. Therefore, if I play the animation back from this first keyframe to the second keyframe, it will move a lot slower than these other areas where the dots are a lot uh, more spaced apart. So basically you wanna view it as the closer your dots are together in your spatial area up here, the slower the animation is going to play. And the further they are apart, the faster the animation is going to play. So I'll actually drag this one out a little bit so that you can really see the difference here. And I'll push this one a little bit closer. Now watch. Notice how it's going very slow, then it goes very fast. Did you catch that? Now, let me ask you, what would happen if I was to actually say, move my, move my keyframe down here and then drag it closer together? What do you think that would happen? Well, actually, this guy up here would get a lot faster. So notice that if I zoom in a lot, like right about here, and then I say, move this to about 10 frames, this is going to move a lot faster because it has a lot less time to cover the space. So if I zoom out and play it back, it moves a little bit faster. It's pretty close to this one, but I wanna make it very fast. So I'm gonna put it all the way up here. Notice that there's only like one frame here, I think. Play it back. Yeah, it just goes so fast. I'll make it uh, five frames. There. 
So yeah, it goes very fast and then it slows down. And then from this guy to this guy, um, it's a little bit faster than, than the second area right here. So that's how the motion path works with the spatial and temporal areas in your composition, along with the keyframes. All right, so now let us look at the keyframe interpolation. So we're gonna select all of our keyframes by pressing the position here. And if we look at it now, we will notice that all of our lines are very straight in the spatial. But if we wanted to change this or smooth it out, we could right click on it right here, or you could actually right click on your keyframes and then select keyframe interpolation. Now under the spatial, this is what we're gonna look at first. Now it is set to linear, which means straight, but we wanna give it a curve. So we're gonna select Bezier, select it. Now notice that our keyframes have been given curves in the spatial. And if we play it back, notice that it's moving not as straight as the linear. And we are able to actually adjust these handles over here. So if I select it, I can move it like this and play around with it like this. So I can really just play with my motion path a lot more effectively. So if I play it back, it's gonna go a little bit crazy like that. So that's how the Bezier path works. It smooths out your keyframes and it gives you the ability to adjust your handles. Now let's look at the next option, which we have. If I zoom out here and then I'll just right click again, go to keyframe interpolation, and then I will select continuous Bezier under the spatial, press okay. Now notice that the keyframes have been given the curve again, but if I grab my handle, Notice that it's connected to the other one. Whatever I do to one side affects the others. So they are not independent like the Bezier was. And the more I affect one side, the more drastic the change is going to be for the keyframe. And the closer I have these together, the less drastic it will be. But if I really drag this apart, notice that it just gets really extreme. So that's how the continuous Bezier path works. Now let us look at the next one. So I'm gonna right click, go to keyframe interpolation, and I will select auto Bezier. Press okay. So this auto Bezier basically smooths it out. Um, I'll play through it really quickly. It just smooths it out. And this is what is done when you press F9 or easy ease. And this is what happens, the auto Bezier. And we also have handles here as well that we can grab. But once you grab the handle, the keyframe actually turns into a continuous Bezier again. So that's something to keep in mind. You can grab this one too, and it'll turn back to continuous Bezier as well. So that's a little bit about how the keyframe interpolation works in the spatial. And next we will look at how it works in the temporal. All right, guys, so now we're gonna look at the temporal interpolation. So if I go ahead and I select my keyframes here, and then I right click, I will go down to keyframe interpolation, and then I will go to temporal interpolation, and then I'll make them Bezier, like this, press okay. Now to see this, we have to go into the graph editor because this is dealing with time, and we're not gonna be able to see it with just this spatial view up here. So let's go down to this graph editor, select it, and now we have our keyframes and we see them in time. So if I select them all, notice that they appear up here and I can make adjustments here so I can pull this down if I want. Now, why are we seeing two keyframe spots here? When up here, I only see one keyframe. This is because After Effects is showing me the incoming point of the keyframe and the outcoming point of the keyframe. So you can make adjustments here on your speed graph if you want. You can play with it right here and you can make it come in very speedy. So it'll come in like that and then it will slow down. We told After Effects up until this point we want it to come in very fast and then we want it to slow down until it gets to this time. And you can just play with these handles here if you want and uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff here. Now, if you want to change the type of your keyframes, you can simply right click here, go up to keyframe interpolation again, and you can select continuous Bezier. 
Now notice that you don't have both handles, you only have one because they are connected. It's continuous Bezier. And if I smooth this out, I can just play with it the way that I want. I can zoom this up like this, do something really exaggerated. So if I play it, it goes in slow, speeds up, and then it slows down. You can also change your keyframe interpolation to linear. So we have our endpoint and then our outgoing point here as well. And you're able to make your adjustments here the way that you want. So it plays like this and so on. And you can also change it to the auto bezier as well. So press OK and you have this. And you're able to do a lot of cool stuff here. And notice too that I can move my keyframes. So if I want to move this one and make this one longer, notice that it moves in time. And if I go back here, my keyframe has been moved to nine seconds. Press Control Z to put it back. I'll go back to the graph editor. And then I'll select all my keyframes. And then I'll right click, go back to keyframe interpolation. And if I go up to current settings, and I select this hold, notice what happens. Notice that everything got still and it jumps to the next keyframe. So that's what we told After Effects to do. We told it to basically hold it at this position until it gets to the next keyframe and then to hold it at this position until it gets to the next keyframe. So like this. Now, if you wanna change your keyframes, you don't always have to right click on them and select keyframe interpolation. You can also Go down here and you can change it to hold or, or to linear or auto bezier and so on. And we have different easy ease options as well. All right guys, so let's now look at the easy ease option that we have here. So I have my keyframes here selected and notice that if I go through, it plays very uh, linear, so very straight, but this is not how things actually move in real time. Usually something starts off a little slow, then it speeds up in time, and then it slows down towards the end. So let us just take our first keyframes right here. And I'll just push all of this over here so that I can see it a little bit better. Like that. Now let's say I grab this keyframe right here, and I want the square to come in pretty slow and then start to move faster. I would right click on it go up to keyframe assistance, and then I would press easy ease out. In other words, it's gonna start slow, but then it's gonna build up and go faster towards the end. So if I play it back, so it speeds up a little bit. Now let's go to this last keyframe here as well. And we want our square here to, to build up speed a little bit and then to slow down. So I'm gonna set this one here to easy ease in like this. And then for these middle two, I'm actually going to set these both to just the easy ease. And this is going to smooth out both sides like this. So if I play it back, it goes like that. And it just goes a little bit smoother like that. And you can play with these handlebars as well like this. You can adjust it the way that you want. So it slows down, then it builds up, and so on. And if you wanted to make these all linear, again, and you wanna skip that entire process that we just did, all you have to do is go to Easy Ease right here, and then they are Easy Eased for you. So that's a quick way to do it. And if you wanna do this outside of the speed graph or the graph editor, um, you could just set these back to linear like that. And then you could set your keyframes to what you want them to be, either easy ease in, easy ease out. I'm just gonna grab them all and press F9, and the whole process will be done for you. And we will see it in here. One other point that I wanted to add here as well is that you can also add in different keyframes. So if I add a keyframe here, notice that a new keyframe will be created in the graph editor. I can put another one right here and I can just make edits to it. So that's how you can add keyframes in your graph editor. 
Now that is how the motion path works in After Effects with the different keyframe interpolations. I hope that you learned a lot and we will see you in the next tutorial. Until next time.